be surprised how much a vein graft will support. And it, you know, there are things to be gained from a vein graft in that you get a good seal. We can't prove that that's necessary, but your brain tells you that it's a good idea. And it will support the weight of the prosthesis. And there are disadvantages. You can't see where the hole is. So you pay your money, as we say in the UK, and you take your choice. But at the moment, we can't prove that a vein graft is necessary. I have a very simplistic way of looking at it, is when my BMW is rebuilt, I want a cylinder head gasket to stop the oil leaking out. But I can't prove statistically that the vein graft's important. Wilco might be able to tell you. I'm not babbling. It's how you think about it. You tell us, whether, is it necessary to have a seal? I, I think it's necessary to have a seal on your BMW. <laughs> Nobody knows, really. Um, but we know that the results done in this clinic are fantastic. So I think maybe it's wise to look more at this technique because it's, it's, the results are fantastic, both with the vein graft, anyway. With this slightly bigger hole than we uh, we don't really have, the vein graft apparently may put some. So Robert, what do the aviation authorities say in France? <laughs> So I, I think the vein graft, you know, it's not a question of uh, success rate with the vein graft. I personally, I don't think uh, the difference in success rate is related to the fact that you use or not a vein graft. You can have, achieve a perfect success, success rate post-op without vein graft. I really think the vein, the only point with the vein is a kind of security. When I want to seal something, I prefer sealing the opening with a large uh, tissue rather than just picking up some uh, connective tissue post uh, I think the most important thing, and we disagree with Wilco, we, we disagree. <laughs> but I say the truth, you're a liar. Separate. <laughs> it's in terms of distance and measurement. This guy doesn't believe in this. So he, he tried to understand why I get better results than he gets. He's the, he's the same surgeon as me. He's got, he's got a good experience. He's a great surgeon. He's perfect with his hands. So it's not, uh, it's not related. Stop it. But the main difference is that he does not measure. Never. Never. So he's using all the time a 4.5 millimeter length piston which works in 75% or 80% of cases. If I look to my database, I put every detail inside since the beginning. So with more than 5,000 patients, I know the average length, which is true, 4.5. But we have cases in which it's less than four and more than five, even on primary. So of course, it will fail. And this is why sometimes you can get 10, 15% difference in terms. So he doesn't believe in this, so he tries to find other way of turning around the right way. But the, the main cause is this, I'm sure. You make, improve, you improve your results in ontology. I'm, I'm talking about functional surgery. We improve our results if we work into details. In terms of measuring, placement of a prosthesis. If we are not happy, we remove the prosthesis, put another one. That makes a huge difference, I think. You know, This is uh, the, pain, the, the main point. More important than the vein. OK, okay. Robert, can I answer now? No, yeah, that's fine. We're finished. No, the, the thing is, it's true that we don't really measure. But what happens? No, no, no. No, no, no. Let me, let me explain to you. Because what, what we do, we put the prosthesis in. And you can judge very well when the prosthesis is in. And the residents are very happy when I take one out and give it to them and say, OK, this, this size is wrong. So we do have a certain percentage that we do take out because they're not right. So we measure actually by the position of the prosthesis. Who, uh, who, well, OK, uh, Robert has, is right with the vein graft. Who does a vein graft in staple surgery? Really? Are there any non-English, French doing this? Don't put your hand up. <laughs> so, no, no. And uh, who always who always measures the distance? Ah, not a minority. Ah, there. No, it's still a minority. So, so, a minority. The, so, the, so the European economy, despite being dependent on the Greek and the Germans, is dependent on the Dutch not letting water in. And you're guessing. You're guessing. When in your kitchen, if you want to place something between two walls, yes. do you measure or not? 
I have so much. It's a very simple question. Okay. Do you measure or not? <laughs> Let me answer. I'll have someone do it. <laughs> so what, one final one to Thomas. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thomas, one. would you scuba dive with a state piece? That's a good question. And, and, and this might change my mind over the next uh, weeks or years because what... I would like to ask another question to you instead of, I, I wouldn't have this patient scuba diving, for sure not. But I'm, I wonder whether you have seen patients having a late, when, 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 when uh, landing with the plane, five, ten years later, losing hearing. Well, I've seen it too, a couple of cases in so many cases. So if you have, honestly, Never seen? Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> honestly, I don't measure. Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> yes. I don't say it never happened because I'm not sure about that. Yes, of course. Because this could make, make change my mind in, in, in interposition. Because people are traveling more and more nowadays than we, that they were in the past. Everybody is going to take a plane at a certain moment. And we see from time to time people when t coming back from holiday, yeah. they have a sudden hearing loss. And it's certainly due to this piston going into the laboratory. It must be something like that. Or so air. if this vein can prevent this, I would be willing to start using it. But, but, but nobody knows. But nobody knows. Thomas, when, when you, when you do, when, when you do your technique, you do the technique what is so called without interposition, right? How do you proceed? You put your prosthesis and that's all, or do you seal with some residual vein, uh, uh, tissue, or, or blood? Depends. Nothing. But that's a real uh, without interposition technique. That's fine. There will be blood anyway. It will always be yeah. bleeding a little bit. Yeah. 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 But the pressure changes as well in an aircraft are tiny compared no. with the pressure changes diving in terms of the, the speed of change. And I'm very wary about patients diving, but I do let them dive. No. I, have, I have a mic. I have a stewardess. Who, 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 well, I have to go into all the details. And, so, no, I, I didn't have her. KLM, <laughs> obviously. And, uh, the question is, where is the pressure? Whether it's at one point air entering into the cochlea? I don't yes. know. Well, when blowing the, their ears. Yeah. So it's very difficult to say. I think your perforation in the foot plate is bigger than the perforation I make. I don't make a 0 0.7 perforation, but I don't oh, do so it in the precision. And so I'm pressure sure gets through a, a big hole more than it gets through a small hole. You know we, that's rubbish. We know that. That's, which, which, I'm not going to use the flow, word. Flow. This is which which <laughs> diameter you use for the I, 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 for I the stapedotomy? 0.5. Yeah. yeah. So we, you make a 0.5, but you which which diameter of? Yeah, but which drill do you use for that? Oh, you pick. Ah. Okay. So, so we, you have a 0.5 millimeter diameter pick. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so, John, uh, re with regard to your comment about diving pressure being higher than atmosphere than flying pressure, that's only relevant if you believe the fish that occurs from the inside out. If it occurs from the outside in, most of the eardrum change in the first half millimeter, half centimeter, half atmosphere. Pressure. So, after that, doesn't matter. It only goes half a half a half of that, half of that. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty pretty complicated for John. Yeah. Try. <laughs> But most of the interim change will happen in the first half. half yeah. so, that's the, so you can get just as big excursions in flying as in diving of the eardrum. So, so I ask you guys, you two guys, you're going to sit on the bottom in a five meter pool with your aqualung on. Do you want a vein graft or do you not want a vein graft or do you want to go in the pool in the first place? John, John is this, this the same strange analogy with the gaskets of your BMW? You don't have a, you don't have a gasket, any, a BMW anyway, but it doesn't make sense. Okay. You're with me, eh? you're my guest. So you're <laughs> Robert is my friend. Uh, so I just got a text actually from Bradford, UK, so we should all say hi to Chris Rain, and the people are really watching this live on the internet, which is exciting. 
Um, I like to be a little provocative. And I don't put a seal either. I stop putting a seal on. And when you go back and do revision surgery, there's always a good fibrotic seal. And that comes, and if you were to talk to John House or Howard House about that, it would be a blood seal leading to fibrosis. And so routinely on a revision, I need a laser to free up the soft tissue so I can see the, the stapedotomy. The other thing that I challenge on a revision stapes is there is a technique to actually leave the incus, the eroded incus in place, not relocate the malleus, and that's this, which I did not believe in six months ago, um, and I've now used it on six cases, which is this MVP prosthesis. And, um, and what I think that, uh, I'll see the results, and I, I'm not gonna even present any results until they're you know, a couple of years out, but you still maintain an intact ossicular chain with the exception of the incus epidial joint, and part of what goes on, if there is movement of the stapes prosthesis, um, is the stability from the acicular chain can prevent that from being sucked in, if indeed su sucking in is the problem. And I think what Manhart said, which is very important, is the complications I've seen from people with stapes occur in swimming pools, not diving tanks. Because the first atmosphere, or, or, it, it, I mean the first atmosphere is in the first 10 meters. So um, it's, it's almost a fallacy to say you, you, can, you cannot dive, but you can dive into a swimming pool because it's getting a large pressure change. So. Uh, can I just have a question, Duke? What is the policy in, uh, in, in the U.S. for the pilot? I'm talking about uh, in the Army or in, in the civil? Uh, because we have a policy here. I'll let you know, but what is the policy in the U.S.? So there's a, an otologist who works with the FAA, David Shaw from Chicago. And, and I, I had this conversation with David because I have a lot of pilots in Seattle. And uh, there, it's a case-by-case -case basis. And, uh, and the, the pressurization of the average commercial airliner is 9,000 feet. And you can actually take a patient in a hyperbaric chamber to 9,000 feet quite easily and do it repetitively. You can even bounce them and see if they get any reaction. And I also have a stapes patient who flies, it, flies an A6 Prowler aircraft for the Navy and has to land and take off an aircraft carrier. Okay. And, and we tested him, and he did fine. So he's still the, we, we, uh, You know, I didn't do a stapedotomy, so. We, 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 we have a policy in France. They are allowed now to, to have surgery if they have toscarosis, but they need to go for a stapedotomy. That's the, the, the first uh, Not a point. A stapedectomy. Stapedectomy. Right. And, well, for the moment, no. They don't, they don't speak about it in the position. They, uh, they force to have a stapedotomy, but they don't force to have a stapid, uh, to have interposition. Yeah. It needs to be like this. They have to stop flying for one year. They have to have uh, some examination before and after, and then they could fly back. That's interesting because it's it's official. So, so you're not going to talk this afternoon, do? So the summary, as is in the last 17 years, is we don't know. Right. Okay. Women in Wales, sheep's intestine. <laughs> thanks, thanks, John. It's it's an interesting question. This uh, seal because. You, what, if you're looking at a fibrotic seal, what you're asking is not only that it goes round the circumference, but it also goes underneath the piston and forms an absolutely perfect seal. And when you take out one of these pistons, you usually just see a, a hole with perilymph in it. Uh, and it's a question of whether you can guarantee the integrity all the way around, uh, which is quite a, quite a big ask. Do you want to come back? So we haven't proved there's a problem. I mean, we're all arguing about this, and we've all admitted, you know, we all have very strong convictions, but we can't prove them. Well, there's always saying that about my convictions. It, it, it's a hunch, isn't it? And a well, lot of what we I, do is I, a hunch. I was going to say that, you know, with the pilots, because we live in a um, area with a big military presence as well. We have a lot of pilots and uh, aviation uh, people come to see us, and. Uh, um, you know, you can put them in a barometric, the, the fundamental mechanisms, the eardrum going in and out. You can also just do tympanometry and increase the pressure in the ear canal. And we've done that in some pilots to prove that they, uh, by putting the pressure to double what they would experience uh, in, the, in the aircraft, in the external ear canal, uh, that they did not get dizziness. And they, were, they demanded some kind of proof before we'd let them fly, fly. But you can do that more easily with a tympanometer than putting them in a diving chamber, unless you believe that the explosive mechanism is actually the pressure inside the pneumo labyrinth, which I don't think it is. But you have a policy or not? We've been asked to do that by um, the Air Canada, but not an official policy that was their policy. You see, we don't even have a policy about when you let patients fly. Nobody agrees about that. 
Some of the Americans fly them in and fly them out. Do your, uh, Robert, do your patients die, die sometimes? So Sorry. that would be interesting to know no, whether, it's what, what is hap happening. Yes, some of them do. Some of them do. I always say it's better not to do it because I think oh, it's... I, I, no. die. They die. Oh, die. <laughs> <laughs> so at least then you can have a look and see what you have done. <laughs> That was a nice you trap. Said, yes. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas, so I Thomas. Say, Thomas. Yes, sometimes, when they, when they have the, uh, do you have any slices but or Thomas, any when they have the vein histological graph? sections of post -mortem? Oh, yeah, uh, Elinticum has done that in, uh, in the house clinic, I think. With interposition? Yeah, yeah. We, I think so, yeah. But do you not know, Thomas, no, when, no, they have the graph, <laughs> when they have the vein graph, they don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's time we went and discussed this over lunch? Because you've had a long morning. Um, and then we'll start promptly again this afternoon.